particle P moves with constant acceleration. At time t equals zero, the particle is at O and moving with velocity 2i minus 3j meters per second. At time t equals 2 seconds, P is at the point A with position vector 7i minus 10j meters. Part A wants us to show that the magnitude of the acceleration of P is 2.5 meters per second squared. So the first thing to note that we're told in this question is that the particle P is moving with constant acceleration. And another thing we're told uh, is the velocity of the particle, uh, the position vector of the particle, which we can also call the displacement. And we know that we want to find acceleration. Uh, and one way we can do this with all of these terms is to use the constant acceleration formula. And we know we can do that because we're told that acceleration is constant. And so the way we lay out um, what is also called a Suvat equation uh, is if we list off the terms that we could potentially use, uh, remembering that displacement, velocity and acceleration are all vectors. The displacement s is the position vector, which is 7i minus 10j meters. Uh, the initial velocity is 2i minus 3j, uh, again, as we're told in the question. The final velocity we don't know, um, we're not told this anywhere in the question, but we also don't need to know it in the terms of this question because we're trying to find acceleration, so we can put a slash there. And the acceleration we also don't know, but this time we want to find the acceleration because that's the purpose of the question. So if we put a question mark to signify this. Uh, and last of all, we know that t is 2 because this whole journey uh, where the displacement is 7i minus 10j is this journey we're given here between the time 0 and 2 seconds. So in our equation, we now need to have terms for s, u, a and t uh, and not v. And the one Suvat equation that has this is the equation s is equal to ut plus half a t squared. And now if we substitute in the terms that we have into this equation, we'll end up with 7i minus 10j is equal to 2 multiplied by 2i minus 3j plus a half of a multiplied by 2 squared. And so if we rearrange this a bit, um, we still have 7i minus 10j on the left hand side. But on our right hand side, we now have 4i minus 6j uh, and then this is plus 2a. So the purpose of this question is to find the magnitude of the acceleration so we need to rearrange this so it's in terms of acceleration a. So if we do this and try and get all of the i and j terms on one side and the a term on the other side um, we can first end up with 2a being equal to 3i minus 4j and then if we divide both sides by 2 we have the acceleration is equal to 3 over 2i minus 2j. So now we have uh, a term for the acceleration. What we don't have is the magnitude. So this is the acceleration as a vector, but our question wants us to show that the magnitude is 2.5 meters per second squared. So we need this as one single number, a constant. And so the way we can do this is to visualize it on a diagram. So what 3 over 2i minus 2j means is that if we have a starting point, if we call it O, because we know when t is 0, the particle's at O. So at this starting point O, our acceleration is 3 over 2i along, uh, which means that we're moving right by 3 over 2. So if we draw this on, well, this is 3 over 2 in this direction, and then minus 2j means that we're now moving two downwards. So the j axis um, is vertical and so minus 2j is going to be two down in this direction. Uh, and this will take us to our point a. So when t is zero, p is at this point a here. Uh, and we can connect these up o to a. And this is our acceleration from o to a. And so we can see that this has formed a right angle triangle. And we know that if we wanted to find this length here, which is our magnitude of acceleration, then what we can do is we can use Pythagoras' theorem. So we know that the magnitude of A, which could be written with these modulus signs, the magnitude of A is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 squared 
plus minus 2 squared or just plus 2 squared um, these are uh, exactly the same because any negative number squared is positive anyway uh, and then if we solve this we find that the magnitude of a is equal to 2.5 meters per second squared um, which is what we were trying to show in the question in the first place so we know we've got our question right now this question is worth four marks and we get our first mark as a method mark for using this expression s equals ut plus half at squared and substituting in our numbers correctly uh, and our second mark is an answer mark for finding this expression for the acceleration now thirdly we get a method mark for attempting to find the magnitude of a using pythagoras uh, and our last mark is an answer mark for ending up with 2.5 meters per second squared the instant when p leaves the point a, the acceleration of p changes so that p now moves with constant acceleration 4i plus 8.8j meters per second squared. At the instant when p reaches the point b, the direction of motion of p is northeast, and part b wants us to find the time it takes for p to travel from a to b. Now unfortunately with this question we can't quite do what we did in part a where we constructed von Suvat equation and that was enough to find uh, our answer, the acceleration in that case. Um, but we can't do that here for the reason that we just don't have enough uh, information. We've been given the acceleration between A and B, and we know that the direction of motion is northeast, but this isn't enough um, to construct a Suvat equation and solve it. Um, so we need to find more information. Uh, and the first way we can do this is using the fact that before the particle P travelled to B, um, it came from point O. So it went from O to A to B. Uh, and if we were to draw this on a diagram, where this is the point O, this is A, and this is B, we just kind of assume they've travelled in this straight line, we know that at the point O, particle P was travelling with an initial velocity, uh, if we call that U1, and therefore when it got to A, there was a final velocity, V1, um, and we kind of incorporated that in our Suvat equation for part A. And we can say that the same must be true between A and B. It must leave A with some initial velocity u2, and it must have got to B with a final velocity, if we call that v2. And we can see, looking at this diagram, that above A, we have two velocities. We have the final velocity between O and A, and the initial velocity between A and B. And since these are both velocities at the point A, um, happening at the same time, these velocities must be equal. So the initial velocity between A and B has to be equal to the final velocity between O and A. Uh, and we can use that to construct an equation and find the final velocity between O and A, and then incorporate that into an equation between A and B. So if we write out that from O to A, um, if we do a Suvat equation, we know that first of all, the displacement from O to A is 7i minus 10j, we're told this in the question, um, and the initial velocity is 2i minus 3j. Again, um, we've been given this information. Uh, the final velocity v is what we're trying to find, because we know it's the same as the initial velocity between a and b. Um, the acceleration we also found in part a, uh, and as a vector, we, it's 3 over 2i minus 2j. And the time, because we know we're between o and a, uh, and we know this is between time 0 and 2 seconds, we know that the time must be 2 seconds. Now, with all this information, we actually can pick um, four of the five constant acceleration formula, um, any of the ones with v in them, uh, because v is the one thing we need to be in this equation, because that's what we're trying to find. But any of the other four we can use, um, because we have so much information. So if we were to just pick one, because they should all give the same answer, if we were to pick v equals u plus at and substitute in the values we know that v is equal to 2i minus 3j plus 2 the time times by 3 over 2i minus 2j uh, and so if we expand out these brackets firstly on the far right we have the velocity is equal to 2i minus 3j plus 3i minus 4j uh, and so if we add the i terms and the j terms together separately, we have a final equation that the velocity between O and A, or the final velocity, is equal to 5i 
minus 7j. And therefore, we know that this is also the initial velocity between a and b. Uh, and we can use that now uh, in an equation for a and b. So if we now have enough information to consider between a and b, uh, as opposed to o and a, uh, the first thing we want to do before we construct a SUVAT equation, um, just to get more information about between a and b, is think about the fact that we were told that the direction of motion of p is northeast. Uh, and if we were to draw that on a diagram where this is north uh, and this is east, we know that if we label these as north and east, that northeast, um, if it's exactly northeast, must be exactly in the middle of these. Um, and therefore, if it's exactly in the middle of these, and this is a 90 degree angle, then it must have an angle of 45 degrees, uh, kind of above east. And if we think of this as a, a vector, because we know that if the direction of motion of p is northeast, that this is kind of the direction of the velocity. Um, so if we think of this as velocity, for this angle here to be exactly 45 degrees, we must have to go along kind of east the same amount that we go up north. So if we're considering this as a vector, the i component, because this is kind of the i axis, must be the same as the j component. So if we write this information down that the i component has to be equal uh, to the j component, and this is of the velocity between a and b, we know that although we don't know the velocity between a and b, we can use this information in a SUVAT equation because we know that the i component must be equal to the j component. So if we were to now construct a SUVAT equation, kind of bearing this in mind, um, so we know that the displacement between a and b, we've not been told anywhere in the question, um, we haven't worked it out, so we don't know this displacement. The initial velocity is the same as this final velocity for o and a, so this is equal to 5i minus 7j. The final velocity we don't know, but since we've just found out that the i component of the final velocity must be equal to the j component, we do know something about this. So we keep this in our equation so and say that we don't know it but we want to use it in our equation with a question mark. Um, uh, the acceleration we've been told in the question is 4i plus 8.8j uh, and last of all the time we don't know but that's what the question is asking us to find so we definitely need to keep this in our equation because that should be our kind of final result. So the one equation that has all of these terms but s the displacement in uh, is the equation v equals u plus a t. So if we substitute in the values here, we don't know velocity. We know that u is 5i minus 7j, uh, and this is plus 4i plus 8.8j, all multiplied by t. Now, if we expand out these brackets on the far right, just so we can kind of get everything in terms of i and j, um, and if while we're at it, if we do this, we group the i terms and the j terms together separately, we know that 4 times t is 4t. So for the i terms, we're left with 5 plus 4t i. Uh, and for the j terms, 8.8t take away 7 is what we're left with. So now that we have this expression, and we have it in terms of this final velocity, um, and luckily what we know about this final velocity is that the i component must be equal to the j component, which means that this 5 plus 4t must be equal to this 8.8t take away 7. So if we write that out as an equation, we can see that what we're left with is an equation with one unknown variable, which is the time, which is what our question is asking us to find. So if we now rearrange this 4 time, we take away 4 from both sides, we're left with 5 equals 4.8t take away 7, uh, and then we, if we add 7 to both sides and divide by 4.8 um, to find just what t is, we find that in the end, t is equal to 2.5 seconds. And this question is worth four marks. Um, and our first mark is a method mark. And it comes from using a SUVAT equation to find what the velocity is. So we get a method mark for doing it. Uh, and an answer mark for getting the right answers. And now we get our third mark as a method mark 
for constructing an equation using SUVAT again um, with all of these values that we've done. Um, so just a method mark for attempting to do this. And then we get our last fourth mark as an answer mark for doing this correctly, equating the i and j components and finding that t is equal to 2.5 seconds.